hey guys welcome back to the react native course in this video we are going to make a form and we're gonna make a post request so basically what we're gonna do we are gonna make uh, some input field and we're gonna store that data uh, input field in state and we're gonna make api call and we will test it out okay so let's see first uh, you can see that uh, i created one json server and to run this uh, so how i created json server i created one file called db.json we're gonna have a post api post key and that is the empty array right now and to run this i'm just typing json server does that watch and the file name and i have to do hit enter so our server it is started okay so in the last video you can see that we have discussed that how to make api call on button click and this is the code snippet which we had uh, written uh, which we had done last uh, last session okay so let's see uh, how we can make api call for a pop like how can we submit the form basically so i'm going to create one quickly a component by typing rnfes so you can see that it's written a uh, one function or component for me now after that what i'm gonna do i'm I have to create one form okay to create a form uh let me add a some form uh, uh post form okay so let's add uh, some view and inside the view uh we're gonna have a text and it will be name and we're gonna have a text input as well okay and we're gonna have a let's style this as well styles dot text input okay so it looks like an input field text input and let's give a background color as a white okay and you can see that some color is there but it's not looking so well so i'm going to use border bottom color will be black for now and border bottom width will be one if i give that so you can see that some <clears throat> okay let's give border width i don't think it's gonna looking well and the border color as well border color as well black okay so you can see that this is the input field which you can see okay let's style the label as well style will be styles dot label okay so this is gonna be a label for text input and let's add some font size will be 20 for now and the color will be black my bad color will be black and font width will be no let's leave it font weight for now and let's see so you can see that the name field is created and we can type anything now after this uh, let's create a one another more one more input uh, field and that could be uh, what do you think name title let's suppose post title and let's add a title as well okay cool so we can see that we have a name field and we have another title field and after that uh, after this that we're gonna have a button and whenever user click on this button we're gonna submit the form create a create post okay we're gonna have a defined on press event as well so whenever we uh we can submit the form handle submit form okay now we have created a function called handle submit form let's create a function quickly handle submit form right so awesome now let's style this container as well so let me style this container for now style dot container and inside here what we're gonna do uh, display no let's flex as a one so it will take the whole width and i'm thinking to give some margin as well margin as a 10 and okay now let's give some padding to the let's give some margin to the uh, input field as well so margin will be 
five so you can see this you know some margin i'm gonna give some margin vertically so it's gonna be margin vertically so let's keep as a 10 i think the button space will be looks good i think let's make it 15 oh the, it should be 15 not 5 man okay so we got we can see that a uh, name and title field it's looking well not so well but yeah it's looking well let's give some border radius as well of five let's see how it's gonna look like yeah better it's looking well well now after that uh let's style this as well uh st st style will be uh styles dot heading and i just copy this heading as well and after that let's uh give some font size as a 20 and color will be same for black let's see and let's make it 25 it's it's looking too well and i'm going to make text align as a center okay awesome 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 it's looking so good man damn good we have created a cool form and now let's think about like how we can manage the state to manage the state we're gonna create a one called post and set post okay we're gonna have a user state and inside the user state we're gonna have a two field called name initial value be null and same for the title initial value be null okay now how we're gonna show the value here we're gonna have a value uh, field and we're gonna show like this post uh post dot uh name okay same for this input as well value will be uh, post dot title okay now uh, we have to so, uh, uh, do this all this stuff like on change text event as well we have to handle that and whenever the value get changed so we are gonna get the value in this object so whatever the user type we are gonna get the value so if i just console the value whatever we are getting in the terminal and let me reload, reload, reload the component so if i type a b c you can see that all the text we are getting right so we have to set this text to the set state so we have to write set post okay and we are getting the previous uh, value here previous value and after that what we're gonna do we're gonna spread the previous value okay and after that <coughs> you are getting some error okay not a big deal now after that we're gonna set name as a a value and let's see what error we are getting uh, the error looks similar to me okay let's do like this uh, <coughs> let me open this function as well and we're gonna return a one object you can do like this as well okay like this as well and yeah i think it's working well so this is like you know, more on the longer terms but i think so okay let's make it much more simpler so what we're gonna do uh what we're gonna do uh let's make it much more simpler uh, by returning an object if I just do return an object uh, like this and and whatever the value we are going to split the previous value and the title will be uh, title will be a new value oh okay and if I do it's working well I think yeah and if i console the hair post so we should get the updated value every time basically it will re-render that component okay so you can see that uh uh it should be name we are updating the values for name and if i reload this component okay and if i type something name so you can see that it's updating the name okay now let's handle this for as well uh for uh, another text input so we have called on change text event and we're gonna try with a different value so 
uh, we gonna get the new value parameter here okay and once we get the new value we're gonna perform some certain task here so the, the task will be like you know update the set post object with the uh, with the like this how I'm going to do basically I'm going to spread the existing object every time okay and I'm going to update the title value uh, with the new value okay now let's see if I just reload this and it's some prettier error and if I type title you can see that it's updating that value okay so we're gonna have a name we're gonna have a, a title okay so you can see that our JSON object look like this perfect so basically we have seen like how to manage the JSON object so let's try to understand quickly what we are doing here uh, we had cre created a one state uh, like post state and in that post state we have a two one object with two keys name and the title okay now after that we have a text uh, text field and which the level is the name and after that we have a text input the value will be post dot name and whenever the value get changed whenever we type on change uh, whenever we do perform on change event on the text input we are updating this test set post value with the new value so what we're gonna do we are gonna using set post and inside this object inside this function we are getting the previous value and we are just update we are just spreading the previous value and updating with the new value okay so this is the one way another way like same looks like this so we are going to setting the set post and we are setting the spreading the previous value and for the title we are just updating with the new value okay so this is all about the state management of this now let's uh, do a api call in the last video we have used the method of async of it but in this video we are going to use dot then dot catch method so first what we have to do you have to copy this you have to define the api url so i'm going to just define defining the api url so our api url is like localhost 3000 uh, slash post and we our emulator doesn't understand local so we have to use our ip address so to get the ip address what we have to do we have to do uh, ip config once we do ip config we get the local address ip address just copy this and at the place of local host, you have to place this okay now after that let's define the api url and the second parameter will be uh, taking the method so we gonna do method as a post request okay and uh, after that we have to define the headers and headers will be uh, looks like this content types inside here we have to pass content type application slash json okay now after passing the headers we have to pass the body as well the body will be uh, we have to stringify that data json dot stringify so we are our body will be post this data post object we are passing that so we have defined the method we have defined the headers body now after once we uh, the api get success dot then we get the response okay uh, once we get the response we gonna convert that response dot json okay now once we get that response into json we gonna get the data here data and we are gonna consoling that data okay so let's see let's see what we are getting in the console if i just reload the server and if i type name title if i click create post so you can see that our server is running okay and if i show the db.json file quickly and you can see that name that is created and let me add a new file name to name will be like update with the name uh zero degree coder the title will be a uh, react native dev post and if i click on create post so you can see that we got the new object and let's update with 9 so you can see that it's creating it's making a post request 
awesome now let's suppose you are getting some error uh, you want to check that are we getting any error or not so that for that we have to use dot catch method and we're gonna have a error error as well and if we get some error so we're gonna console that error as well okay now there's one thing I just love to add that as well so you guys can use XEOS as well so you don't have to stringify the body while making the API call XEOS is also similar to the fetch okay now after that uh, you can show a loader as well like you know when you're making API calls you can show a loader uh, and by handling the consist login while uh, you can to use anti activity indicator in the last video we have used the activity indicator okay so let's summarize this video quickly so we have created a one uh, two text input so whenever we change the value so we have defined the post dot name and whenever the value get changed we are setting the post by spreading the previous value and the name will be the new value whatever the user typed and same for this we are using set post method and we are spreading the previous value and the title will be with the new value okay we have created one button called create create post so whenever user submit the form click uh, click on create post so it's calling a function called handle submit form inside there we have defined the endpoint we have not written the local host we are using we have typed our ip address because local host doesn't understand our emulator so you can use ip address method or you can use ngrock that's up to you now after that we have defined the pass the api url inside the fetch method and after that it will took the object method post we have to, because we are performing post request we have defined the headers content application json and we have defined the body inside the body we are passing the data okay now once we get the response we are converting that response to json format and once we get the data we are just consoling that if you are getting some error it will went to the disk block and we will get the error okay so yeah this is all in this video and in the next video what we're gonna do in the next video uh, we're gonna see that how to add validation in form so yeah thank you everyone see you guys in the next video please let me know if you guys have any question thank you bye